to my farmhouse kitchen. For those that might be tuning in for the first time, I'm Sherry Mitchell. I live here on Cherry Ridge Farms, and this is my farmhouse. Today we are going to do an experiment. I think I mentioned many times before when I was a little girl growing up, Debbie was four years older than I, and whenever we were cooking in the kitchen, it was quite, kind of like a science experiment to me because we'd put this and that and a little of that and whatever and put it in the oven or stir it on the stove and we'd come out with a great dish or a pastry or a cookie or whatever. So today, it's coming up on Easter next month. I actually, I think it's in April. Sometimes it's in March, sometimes it's in April. And I think that has to do with the moon. I have to look that up for you. I think that's why it changes. Sometimes it's in April, sometimes it's earlier, and it's in March. But it has something to do with um, the moon or the universe or whatever. Anyway, a very popular back in the day, and I mean way back in the day, was what was known as a hot cross bun. Now, I have never had a hot cross bun. And in fact, I did not know what a hot cross bun was until I was what happened to watch in one of these winter days of snow. Here in Ohio, we have gotten recently several snows and an accumulation of about nine or 10 inches. Um, so you, there's really not a lot you do outside during that time. You make sure that the horses and the augies are all fed. And then you maybe whip up something in the kitchen. Uh, but I was watching some YouTube, and Martha Stewart was the go-to way back in the day when I was a young mother. And I loved all of her stuff. And so she's in the kitchen with her mother um, cooking up hot cross buns. And so that intrigued me, and I wanted to know more about it. So I have just a little bit of history for that. I don't remember all the details, but I'll tell you what it said. All right, so I had to get my computer for this, and um, what Martha Stewart told to her mother, which was Mrs. Costera, about making hot cross buns. I hope I said that right. K-O-S-T-E-R-A. Um, it happened back in, let's see, the buns originated as early as the 12th century, which would be like 1100s, in England. And the bun was made with a cross on top, signifying... Jesus, and it was distributed on Good Friday, so Friday before Jesus' um, resurrection on Sunday, right? It is served on many Easter dinner tables and became com commemorative of Good Friday and across Christendom and became representative of the crucifixion and all the spices that are in it symbolize those used to embalm Jesus at his burial. But I also read that on Good Friday, when these were being made, they were passed out to the poor. So it's kind of like a little um, Christian card to remember that this was the day that Christ was crucified, and on Sunday he was raised from the dead. So you can understand why a lot of people make this as a traditional um, Easter food. Now, I have a recipe, and if you've ever made anything with yeast, it is a long process. If you're busy in the kitchen doing other things, you can whip up the dough, set it to rise while you load the dishwasher or you do a load of laundry, and you kind of work it back and forth, and it's not as long and lengthy as it really seems, but I got to thinking, what about that Rhodes, I was really looking for Rhodes bread yeast bread. It's frozen. It used to come in five loaves in a plastic bag and I looked all over for it and no one had it. But I did find the rolls. Now this is not going to be a sweet roll so the ones that I have the recipe for actually have some sweetness to it. But anyway I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to try to recreate these hot cross buns by using a yeast dough that's already made. Okay. So, um, did you see that? These are just little nuggets that would rise up to be three times that big before we would actually put them in. But um, what's normally in the hot cross buns is nutmeg, cinnamon, and raisins. And I have my raisins right here in my little jar. 
And so I'm going to cut those in two, and I'm going to put in the middle the spices and the raisins and a little sugar. And then we'll put the cross on the top before we actually put it in. We'll have to let it rise, of course. But see if I can't make a hot cross bun a little easier for those who go, oh, I'd like to try that, but I hate doing that whole yeast roll recipe. Okay? All right, give me a minute. We'll be right back. Okay, so total experiment. We're going to see if we can create the hot cross bun without having to do the long, long process of making the dough. So as I said before, I bought these little yeast rolls. They're frozen. You thaw them out, you let them rise, you bake them. Yum! So here, that's a tip for you in itself. You can make your own yeast rolls and everybody thinks you went the whole two hour gamut. So what I'm going to do with this is um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to try two different ways um, because it's an experiment. So I'm going to do, roll this out, put in my um, sugar, my cinnamon, my nutmeg, and my raisins and make rolls. And then I'm going to try just slivering it in two on a few of these because it might be easier. And then I'll tuck in the spices um, and that might not be as easy as I think because that dough kind of doesn't want to do its thing. Um, and that might be a little harder because I'm not going to get much in there, am I? Okay, so maybe we're going to smish it all down, work this in, roll it out, and then cut it. I think that's what we're going to do. Again, you know, if it doesn't work, it'll be great dog biscuits. <laughs> great dog biscuits. So I'm going to take these out. They have thawed out. I'm going to put them in my bowl. Okay. Now, the recipe that I have calls for 24 rolls. And I just had 9 because that's what works perfect in this little 8-inch pan. So with 9 and it calls for 24, I'm only going to use about a third of the recipe that it calls for here. Okay. So you got to keep that in mind. So it would be a half a cup of granulated sugar. So I'll put this over here. Get a little sugar out here. And if I was going to reduce that by three, um, that would be a fourth. Let me grab my measuring cups. So that would be three-fourths, instead of half a cup. So it's going to be less than a quarter of a cup, okay? And just so that you know, let's just measure this out. So you could really be scientific here. The, the whole point is two, three. There's about four, not quite four, tablespoons in a quarter of a cup. So we're just going to take one of those out. We're just sweetening the dough is all we're going to do. And we'll put that in there. We are going to put only a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. This one's easy because it would normally be three quarters. So that makes this one really easy. Of uh, Let's get cinnamon. That could be disaster. Let's do cinnamon, ground cinnamon. So we're only going to do a quarter of a teaspoon. I did a little heaping because I like the flavor of cinnamon. And then it was three-fourths teaspoon of nutmeg. So this one is a good smell. It's mice. And that would be a quarter of a teaspoon of that as well. Um, we put the sugar in there. Nutmeg, we did that. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to put a little butter in there. Also, not much. Just a little. Okay. And then, where's my raisins? Where's my raisins? Okay. That took a minute because the recipe that I had from the Martha Stewart, um, she didn't have raisins in it. But another recipe that I saw did have raisins, and so I liked the thought of having raisins. Now, I had these big old plump raisins, 
um, and I, I like them, but I'm going to chop them up um, instead of leaving them whole like that because I'd like to have a little bit of raisin in all the roll. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to... Now this is uh, about a third of a cup of raisins. Again, we'll get this recipe all down for you. We're just doing a test kitchen. You know test kitchens are very popular. Um, whenever you see a recipe that's in a magazine or something, it's probably run through the test kitchen to make sure no one left out ingredients or that they put a tablespoon down of salt instead of a teaspoon or something like that and to make sure that it's proper. So I'm just going to move my butter. And we're just chopping these up in fine little pieces. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll mix that all up. We'll roll it out and then we'll cut out our roll and then we'll set them to rising. Let's go ahead and move that. Move that out of the way so you can see better. We didn't realize you couldn't see that so much. I could see perfectly. Okay. All right. All right, so we're just going to put that right over into our bowl. I'll move that over here for us. So as you can see, we have our rolls, our cinnamon, our nutmeg, a little sugar, a tad bit of butter, and our currants or raisins. And then we're just going to mix that up. I'm going to wash my hands because it's easier to work dough with your hands than try to do it. And again, this is totally an experiment to see how things will turn out. We'll just mix that right up. A little bit of sugar will make the dough a little bit of sweet because, again, this was a bread dough, which means that it wouldn't have been sweet. I think if you could get um, O'Charlie's, do they sell that in a frozen bread? I don't know, but I think O'Charlie's... Um, buns, sweet rolls. I think that would be perfect for this. Okay. And again, if you don't want to go to all this trouble, you could just buy that dough. Martha Stewart, they used a scissors and on the top of the dough, now it's puffed up and rising. They just go like that and then like this. Just a nice little snip. And that's what actually makes the little cross in the top of the bun. So we got that pretty much worked in there good. Again, I think if you were able to cut the roll in half and put your cinnamon and a little sugar and your raisins in that and then just left it, you'd have a really good distribution of the raisins and the cinnamon and the sugar. But again, we're experimenting here and you know this will be awesome if it works out. Okay. Okay, so I got it all in there. I'm going to have to get a little flour. Move this out of the way so you'll be able to see. I just love these jars for my staples. Oh, and I picked this, I picked this little scoop up recently. Uh, I always think I'm like Laura Ingalls Wilder or Tasha Tudor, two of my favorite people who like to cook old-fashioned stuff, and that's me. Uh -huh. So I'm just gonna pat that a little bit, grab out my rolling pin. This is my favorite. Always has been. Got it years ago with my mother-in-law at an auction in a box of stuff. And I don't know, it's just small and I like the, the green handles. And it works out great with my new kitchen stuff, you know, like my new kitchen colors. So I have the green mixer and I have some green canisters over there. 
and I just kind of have migrated towards it. Not that I meant to do that, but I did. Okay, so we're just going to roll this out lightly. We're looking that we're going to have about eight to nine rolls. And who doesn't like a yeast roll? Hmm? I think everybody does, don't they? I sure do. Okay. All right. And that's going to have a little flavor there to it. I'm wondering if I could have just sprinkled the raisins on top here and rolled them out. I don't know. That might have worked out wonderfully. Okay, let me get a little biscuit cutter. This one I just found the other day. If I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that'll be about perfect. That would be just about. Okay, so not quite sure where I left off, but um, for inquiring minds who want to know, um, what I got was Kroger brand original yeast dinner roll dough. Okay, so it comes in, I mean, there's like um, 36 in here. And as I showed you before, but in case you're just now tuning in, they come in these little frozen dough balls, okay? And you might say, well, she needs to let that dough rise one time, punch it down, let it rise again, then bake it. But I followed the directions on here, and if you were going to make these, you would let them come to room temperature, um, and then you would put them in the pan like I had here and you would butter the top so they don't dry out and you would let them rise at least double in size and then you would bake them so they've already done I think that first process of letting it rise punching it down and then doing it again so that's why I started at this spot again we're doing an experiment isn't this exciting the dogs are all at the door because if it doesn't turn out they're gonna have dog biscuits um, so just for inquiring minds all right, and then we decided, well, what is this? I just happened to find this in a box of stuff. I was sorting through some things um, because I redid my kitchen recently. I hope you like it. Let me get out of the way. Um, redid a new backsplash. Um, changed things up. You notice I love my Crocs. I love my utensils, things like that. Created, I'll show you a picture after a while. We'll include it of my little bakery stand over there with all of my jars and um, I did a DIY of painting the toaster front and back black it used to be red but it didn't look right so uh, we'll do a picture or two of my new kitchen makeover yeah yeah so anyway this little thing right here we decided I found this in a box and we decided that that probably is the donut hole maker those little sure. okay so it has little air holes and i'm assuming that when you cut out that lets the air pop out of there i don't know if you know let us know but anyway how about that i happen to find it and these are almost perfect for the size of this little donut ball that i have so how about that so i i Pre-measured, yep, this is the perfect size to get nine of these out of here, which is what will go in. And I pre-greased this with butter. Okay. And so we'll just go along and get this. One. Twist that a little bit. Two. Maybe twist all the way around. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. Three. Four. I'm going to go to the middle because it has a lot of good raisins. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. I think you got to twist that all the way around to get through there, to cut through there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, Six. Did you ever eat dough when you were little? Seven. 
I did. It's pretty tasty. Eight. And you know what? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have some dough left over. I'm going to create another one. These will be really cool because I like the middle whenever I'm cooking something a lot. So there's nine. Okay? See nine on there? Um, so we will cover these now with a little butter. Okay? Just put your butter in the microwave. I do a stick of butter for 16 seconds in the microwave. Okay? I'm just going to rub the top. I could go ahead and melt down a actual pat of butter and use a little uh, cloth, or not cloth, the um, pastry brush. I could do that. I could do that. Just put a little on there. Get that all done. A little more. And one more. Okay. And then we're going to cover that with plastic wrap to help it not dry out. And we will place this in a warm spot. I'm going to put it over on the stove. You have your lights on. Usually your stove has some heat. We'll cover it with a dish towel. And it's probably going to take... Let's see what they, they tell you. How long do they say that it probably will take? Until double in size. And that usually takes a good hour. Yeah. You can actually do it in the refrigerator. Leave it in there overnight and by morning it's all puffed up and ready to bake at 350. So once these get double in size, we will bake them at 350. All right. So this little bit of dough, we're going to create something. I'll get my little uh, my little tiny iron skillet, I think, and we'll put that in there. And wouldn't that be cool if I put some apples in there? Hmm. Anyway, all an experiment. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so we're back. We've got the pan of rolls ready to rise in a nice warm spot. And actually in the microwave above the stove seemed to be warm. But I got my little skillet out. I love using cast iron. I don't know why. It just takes me back. I learned how to cook in a little cast iron skillet. Not much bigger than this, but it was a little bit bigger. Um, and eventually I learned how to fry an egg over easy without having all those crunchies. I learned how to do that because you don't want to get your skillet too hot. And I'd put it in there and it would just be crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. But I ate it anyway. So we're just going to grease that up a little bit. Whoops, we're just going to use our fingers. Just do that. Whoops. This is the old-fashioned way, right? You saw me wash my hands. Oh, by the way, I did pinch off a little of this. And I think the dough right now tastes really good. So I'm just going to put that right in this skillet. Okay, just like it is. And I'm going to let, set that to rise also. Um, no sense wasting it. And again, we will have the recipe at the end of this video along um, with our finished product. And we're either going to be eating them or we're going to be showing you how the dogs like them, one or the other. And don't forget, um, a reminder, hit subscribe and like. That tells us that you like what we're doing, and subscribe will send a notice to you every time that I make something here in my farmhouse kitchen. All right, stand by. Well, here's our experiment. Hot out of the oven. As you can see, now I did what I saw them do like this, but I think I needed to go a little deeper because I'm not really showing a real good cross um, but that doesn't matter because the other way to do this and there's many ways to do it without icing you would make the cross with your um, scissors or a knife but the other way would be to take your icing and you can do this you know in a cookie press and an icing press I just took a little bit and you would just 
these are gonna be hot so you would just make a cross just like that oops okay you would just make a cross on your bun to have a hot cross bun signifying Easter which is the resurrection of Christ um, so that's what I would do. I would just go ahead, I think, not even worry about cutting those. Whoops. And let's go around this way. Oh my. <laughs> that's a little bit of a blob. Um, and these are really hot. So you do need to have probably a little cookie, um, or not a cooking, but an icing. Let's see if I can not be so close and do better. I think I cut my hole too big in my little plastic thing. Yes, I did. I'm not even going to try that because it's going to look bad. Give me a minute and I'll try to fix this up and present you a nice one. All right. We'll count those as not very good. Okay. So we're going to try this again on each roll and we have a little icing cake decorating thing and all we're going to do and this works much better. Oh yes. Don't try that. So we'll just go across. And another cross. Even though I cut those crosses, mine are really not showing up good. Okay, are you kind of getting the gist of that? This is a big fat cross. Big one! And if I squeeze and go too fast, I get wiggly lines. And over here, we'll do another one. Yep. And that would be hot cross buns. And we'll go one long one here. Whoops, I'm running out of icing, I think. This is a long one. And a cross. That's probably my best one yet. So practice makes perfect, right? Hot cross buns. If you want, you can put um, the raisins in, or you can just put the nutmeg and the cinnamon in, or you could just make regular frozen buns like I did, and just put the cross on there to signify Easter. So we're going to get those out. We're going to have a few of those to sample, and uh, enjoy. It might be your next, next best Easter um, presentation of hot cross buns. You can tell the story about that. And last but not least, like and subscribe.